first I got a message on Facebook and it was from um, this photographer called Arif and um, he asked me if I wanted to join his agency because he had a new upcoming agency that he was um, creating and then um, I agreed to joining a meeting for it and then I went to the meeting and it was a full-blown photo shoot but at first I wasn't really into modeling and then I think um, being introduced to all these amazing designers and photographers really got me into modeling. I think I made it on the Rolling Stones once and that was like crazy for me because I like really loved the Rolling Stones magazine and um, it was just like a surreal moment but besides that probably being able to be in music videos and um, work with really cool brands I think yeah. There was no hard part of the job. I think walking in heels for me, because I never walk in heels. So once they give me a pair of heels, I kind of stop dead in my tracks. Like, I don't want to wear these. But um, besides that, I think nothing really. Besides the waiting, I think. But also the pressure to maintain good looks or whatever. I think that's challenging. Especially with when it comes to weight. You know, weight is also a thing that's very sensitive. Like, it's a sensitive topic. But um, yeah, there has been times where I've struggled with my weight also uh, during modeling jobs and things like that, where I never felt adequate enough, you know. There's always like, it's either you've gained too much weight or you've lost too much weight. There's never really a good balance in between. I believe that um, it is getting better in the sense that now there's a platform for, for plus size models and the variety of models, it's, it's getting bigger and that's what a lot of models deserve, I think, is recognition for their variety because I think what strikes me um, for models is how uniquely beautiful they are. So I hate it when there's like the stigma of how beauty should be. But I really, really love seeing these unique faces and everyone in different shapes and sizes. You know, I think it's, it's really great. I think it's a little bit worse, to be honest with you. I think it's we're still kind of going backwards. But not, not everyone, obviously, but just I think a lot of people here think backwards and we're not really broadening our horizons to just diversity, to be honest with you. So I did uh, theater all of, like for all of my high school career, I did theater. And then I remember my last years of being in high school, I was like, why aren't we doing any acting? You know, I'm, I'm in theater for the acting, like why can't we do more, I don't know, acting workshops instead of like having everything so written. I was getting a bit pissed off at my theater teacher for that, but um, that's where I think my love of acting came from. And then I really love film as well. Actors really inspire me. And then all of a sudden I got this like major like opportunity to be in this movie and I was so scared. I was honestly like, going back and forth like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. Like my anxiety was like over the roof. I just didn't want to do it. And then um, I think it would have been foolish not to do it. So yeah, that's. So I remember I got a call from one of the casting directors and I was like, oh god, I, I don't really want to do this. You know, I'll pass you over to my mom. So I passed it over to my mom and then she started calling my mother. And then my mom was like, Chris, you need to go to the casting. Like you need to go, just try it out, you know? So then I was like, okay, and then she took me to the casting, and then I did awful, and I was like, I, I'm not gonna get anything here, mom, I don't understand why you pull me here, because my Indonesian's terrible as well. And I was like, yeah, no, they're not gonna call me back or anything. And then I get a call back, and they're like, oh, can you come in again? We just wanna give you another script and try it out. So I said, okay, I'll try it out. Uh, and they said, okay, we have this movie for you, it's called um, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, really? I was so excited, because I, I, I got a movie, and um, I was like, are you sure? And she was like, yeah, yeah, you got it, you got it. And I was ecstatic about this movie. And then I think a few weeks later they called me and they're like, hey, listen, we want to change your character. Like, we want to change the movie. So I'm like, okay, what, what movie? And they're like, well, uh, Antoli Rasad by uh, Ikana Tasa. And I'm like, no freaking way. Yes, I would love to do this a thousand times. Well, I got Kiara and um, such a cool character. So I was really, really ecstatic about it. So the film is about uh, four friends, four very good friends, and their co-workers in this bank. And then it's sort of like a love square type of thing. So yeah, four characters, and each of them have like a link to each other. And it's uh, either through love or just friendship. But Kiara, my character, is deeply in love with one of her uh, good friends slash co-workers, Huli, who is in love with another 
woman named um, Denise, who is actually married. And then I'm best friends with a guy called Haris, and Haris is in love with me, but I only see him as a friend. Um, I'm excited to honest, like to be completely honest, I'm super excited for the viewers to see Haris and how animated he is. Because in the book, he's very like, he's really cool and he's such a fun character. But I think the fact that Junot got to play him really, really brought out Haris, and I couldn't think of another person to play Haris. And like even working with him was really fun because he just really brought this character to life, and I can't wait for the audience to like really see that. So Kiara is very uh, confident. She's really independent. She also has a soft spot for Ruli, and she has a soft spot for her um, father who passed away while she was quite young, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and she's very fashionable. She loves shopping. She's quite girly, but at the same time, there's like this edginess to her that really brings out kind of a rough, bitchy, sarcastic kind of personality. So she's a really fun character to play. I think the whole bitchy, sarcastic thing, I think sometimes that comes out, um, especially the way she treats Haris. But also, I think I share that whole like soft side with her as well where we're kind of like hopeless romantics in a sense, but at the same time, very free-willed, so, and open-minded. It's been amazing. Uh, he's honestly one of my very good friends now. Uh, so much fun to work with him, and he's really, really supportive. Like, if I'm going through kind of a rough day at the shoot, he really, he just puts a smile on my face. He's honestly the funniest person ever. A big ball of sunshine. I think the first few like weeks of shooting was really, really hard on me because I felt like I was really scared and insecure about everything. I was insecure about my acting and my Indonesian. I was scared about how awful it was gonna be. And I'm very like, I'm very awkward as a person, especially in front of the camera and all these people that I had no idea, like I had no idea who they were. And that was really challenging for me, I think. Just getting out of my shell, especially Kiara is very, she's very open, she's very confident and then me, who isn't really that confident, especially in an area where I've never dabbled in before, like acting in front of a camera, I think it was just like the scariest thing in the world to me at first. I remember crying on my first day, and then all the makeup ladies were like, don't cry, it's okay. But I was just bawling because I was so scared. And we haven't even started yet, and I was already like in tears. I think being friends with everyone at the location is a really important thing. Because uh, then you get to know all of them and you, it becomes fun, you know. It is actually, honestly, it's, it's a lot of fun if you make it out to be. And like, if you get along with everyone there, or at least you try to, then you're going to get through it. But also it's, I think the whole experience was a big learning experience for me, which made it so interesting. And I love the behind the scenes, everything that goes on behind the screen. Yeah, I think I got through it. Um, pretty okay, I don't know, but yeah, it was fun. So there was, it was, it's not super crazy, honestly, but like for me, oh God, I'm an awful dancer. I can't dance at all. And um, there's a club scene where I had to completely let go. And you know, Junot is like so out there. He's like doing it fine. He's having zero problems with it. And then Masriza was like, Chris, I need you to, I need you to move your body. You gotta like, just go with the music. They even turned on music for me and everything. And, it wasn't crazy, but I just remember everyone laughing at me because it was so awkward. I was the worst, 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 worst dancer out there. Yeah. I think it has helped me in the way that, because um, before modeling it was really hard for me to talk to people that were strangers. And I think that modeling has put me into situations where I'm thrown into like, with people that I don't know and things like that. And usually I'd be very nervous about it but I think it prepared me in being more open with myself and you know, not being so shy or nervous around new people. I think acting is, you need really thick skin for that because you know, you got the amount of like concentration that you need, especially during certain scenes. If they're really intense scenes and things like that, you really gotta have thick skin and a big uh, strong mindset because that concentration thing is like, you really need to be on it, uh, concentrating on the emotion that your character is feeling, um, and just, yeah, there's so many aspects of acting that I found so challenging compared to modeling, 
but at the same time really um, I guess fun and rejuvenating in a way. So it was quite refreshing going from modeling to acting. I'm really bad with remembering my lines, uh, especially uh, Indonesian. I'm not really good at Indonesian. So my lines, I think it's like when you, when you make a mistake, and then you just keep on making the mistake and then you just feel awful because everybody's waiting on you, everyone is staring at you, you are at the center of it and you keep like making a mistake. I think that is one of the worst feelings ever. I remember I had a scene where I was doing a presentation and all these like business term words that I didn't understand at all, like all these economic terms that I didn't understand at all. And I just, oh my God, it was really, really rough. They had to write it down for me and everything. And um, I remember just kind of like having a breakdown that day because like really beating myself up for that. Because I memorized it, but then like I got on to set and then I just, it's like everything went blank. And I think going blank is the worst. I felt intimidated every day. Um, even though like I got to kind of know everybody and everyone was really lovely. It was just like me being super nervous and like anxiety fueled and everything. Yeah, ever since I was, I don't know, middle school, I think, even coming here, I was like really anxiety fueled. And I told my um, my booker, I was like, I don't know, I'm like, I'm so scared to come, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, just tell me if anything goes wrong. And I'm like, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. It's just like, I don't know. It's like nothing's wrong, but then your head is like, everything is wrong, something is bad. And like, it's, it's yeah, I've had, this ever since I think I was little and a lot of people have it, right? There's been, uh, I think, times where I've canceled out on shoots last minute because of it, and I feel really bad for my agency because that's really unprofessional. But there are times where it's like, I really can't do this today. And it's such a first world problem, but it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I have like nothing to complain about, but then like this thing, it's just like mental, mental health does come first, but I think in Jakarta there, well in Indonesia that whole mental health awareness thing isn't very, so finding a therapist is like finding a needle in a haystack, so. But I think there's no shame in going to therapy. I would, I would go now if I could, you know, I think everybody needs a little therapy, so, yeah. I published a book uh, during my gap year about last year, and I think that was a pretty big um, achievement for me. The book is titled Everything In Between, and it's a collection of poetry and prose. Um, I wrote it when I was 16 in this scrappy little notebook, and then um, when I was, when, after I graduated, I was on a gap year, so I reckoned, um, why not make something out of it? So I published it, and it's filled with illustrations and poetry, and yeah. Yeah, I really, really liked poetry, and I loved English literature class. I think everything that I'm into now is a big reflection of what I did in high school and what I enjoyed most in high school. Um, I think I had some inspiring teachers in high school that got me really into literature and theater, things like that. It's really hard for me to find motivation to do things sometimes and I think that um, this movie and this career has really pushed me to do something I thought I could never do. I've always been the kid that never finished anything, to be honest. I never completed anything that I was super proud of. And um, I really hope this movie makes it into the list of at least a few things that I'm proud of. So I guess my philosophy for every day would probably be, I don't know, just do it if you gotta do it, you know? Just, just really push through the day. And even if it isn't, the best that you can do, at least you tried, I guess, but yeah, at least try and give 100% to something. You're really passionate about it. So right now I'm trying to get into university because it's about damn time that I go to university. Um, so I'm working on my applications to go and they want me to make these short movies. So I'm working on making short movies, writing scripts, things like that, just small little projects also to keep me busy, but also I really enjoy the process of it all. Besides that, I, I paint a bit, not very good, but I also still write, so. Uh, mostly abstract, I like to join um, abstract paintings with things that I write. 
but I don't post a lot of it. I keep it very, because I feel like it's too personal. I think like the book was already really, really personal. I think my paintings are on another level of personal. It's kind of like nobody needs to know that, you know? <laughs> University first and then hopefully acting, hopefully. I'm excited for this movie, but also there's a lot of room for improvement with my acting. And um, I can't wait to learn more about it and learn more about the film industry and just film in general, I think. I'm excited to learn more about. And I would love to do an art house film. Um, and I would also love to direct at least a few movies. My mom's gonna kill me. She doesn't know I have this many. I have, I think I have seven or eight. <laughs> I think I got one when I was 15. It's like a little moon, it's my first tattoo. It's really simple and it's really generic, but I, I refuse to cover it up because I think it's an important part of who I was when I was younger. Hi, I'm Chris Aperuset and you're watching Dumb Antifi.